Deputy Neve Smith to discuss the unacceptable waiting times for child assessment of need appointments. Deputies. Thank you very much, Cahirlik, and thank you, Minister, for being here tonight to listen to the concern and hopefully provide some answers. Um, I want to raise with you this evening the issue of assessments of needs uh, and the very bleak reality facing the parents of children waiting for that all-important assessment of need. As you know, Minister, nationally over 4,000 children are overdue their assessment, which demonstrates a huge problem with a ripple effect that seeps into every aspect of that child's life. Because as we know, any child with special needs or a disability, early intervention is key. Critical to having a positive outcome is an early diagnosis, a fast and effective intervention of therapies. In Cavan and Monaghan, and I know it was great to have you there recently down in Castle Blaney where you opened the uh, new group home there in Castle Blaney where there's fantastic work happening for adults and young people with disabilities. But in Cavan and Monaghan specifically, we have 177 children overdue their assessment of need. Therefore, these children are being denied the speech and language therapy that they need, the occupational therapy that they need, and ultimately this negatively affects these children having the access to the supports that they need for their education and school. While waiting times for the assessment of need is already at an unacceptable letter, level, rather, it is further exacerbated by the fact that Cavan and Monaghan were without an assessment of needs officer from September 2017 until May 2018. Minister, that is nine months without the expertise to conduct the critically important assessment of need for those 177 children who are arguably the most vulnerable as they struggle to grow, achieve and develop their individual potential. Not just because of the lack of an intervention in these cases, but because of the absolute absence of any intervention. Minister, I am asking here today to address this immediately by bringing in extra staff, providing the extra resources and doing whatever it takes in order to clear these backlogs and reach the three-month turnaround time the parents should be able to expect from their service from the time of application to the implementation of services, on such, uh, services such as speech and language and OT therapies. Minister, if, one, if for one second you think I'm exaggerating the situation locally in Cavan and Monaghan, I'm just going to bring you two particular cases of a very long list uh, of cases that are coming through my office. One little boy who's waiting four years and eight months for his assessment of need. As you are aware, Minister, there is a mechanism for, complaint, for parents to make a complaint if they feel the process is failing them. Will these parents, out of pure frustration, use that complaints mechanism, but alas, they are no further on and no closer to achieving their initial assessment of need for their child? This child not only is losing out on the therapies that he needs, he's missing out on the SNA that he absolutely desperately needs for to support him and assist him in school. It has to be said that the school are making a huge effort to assist this little boy, but Minister, I have photographs in my office that the parents brought in of bangs and bruises on this little child who's actually fallen in school uh, and you know, his, his mobility is affected and that SNA, this, because he doesn't have that SNA, you know, it's affecting his mobility and, and ability to get around school. This wee boy cannot wait four years and eight months for an assessment of need. The second case I want to highlight with you is another little boy who desperately needs his OT and in front of me I have a letter from the child development team in Cavan Monaghan informing the, the parents that this little boy is on the list for his occupational therapy but the estimated time that he can expect to have to wait is four years and five months. This little boy has autism, needs a home and school plan, he needs integration in his mainstream school and this is achievable, Minister, with the right resources in place. The crux of the problem here seems to be that the transfer from, for children from Enable Ireland to the child development team, that's where the gap and the problem begins to happen. Thank you, Smith, for raising this very important issue of assessment of needs. And again, I want, like she said earlier on, I want to thank her for the warm reception in Castle Blaney last Monday. And it was great to meet the, the families and parents and the carers for the, and to say well done to every directly involved. Now, as the Deputy may be aware, Part 2 of the Disability Act 2005 provides for a statutory system for the assessment of individual health service needs, an assessment report, service statement and a complaints mechanism. Since its commencement in 2007, there has been significant 
year-on-year year increases the number of children in applying both for assessment of need and for disability services generally. Regrettably, these increases have led to an extended waiting periods being experienced currently by almost 4,000 applications are, over, are overdue for completion. So you're not exaggeration when you raise these particular issues. I do recognise and the HSE recognise that assessments of needs of early intervention services for children with disabilities are paramount and need to be improved. And I am aware that the HSE has undertaken a number of initiatives to address the excessive waiting times. Assessment of need compliance improvement plans are in place in all areas and are being actively monitored. Additional resources have been allocated to the areas with the most significant backlogs and those areas have shown a steady decrease in percentage of overdue assessments over the first six months of this year. HSE Disability Services is currently engaged in a major reconfiguration of its existing therapy resources for children with disabilities into multidisciplinary geographically based teams as part of the national programme of progressing disability service for children and young people 0 to 18 years. The key objective of this programme is to bring about equity of access to disability services and consistency of service delivery, with a clear pathway for children with disabilities and their families to services, regardless of where they live, what school they go to, or the nature or the individual's uh, di child's difficulties. Evidence to date from areas from where this has been rolled out shows the implementation of this programme will also have a positive impact on waiting lists for both assessments of need and therapy provision. It is estimated that on average, the one in five children, that's 20%, completing an assessment of need do not have a disability. And like you said, I want to focus on those children in the most need. But 20% do not have a disability. The introduction of a new standard operating procedure for carrying out assessment of need is expected to reduce the number of inappropriate referrals for assessment and will facilitate more timely access for children and young people with a disability. With the introduction of the SOP scheme, uh, while, while the introduction of the SOP scheme has been delayed by the necessary discussions and consultations with professional bodies, I understand that this process is now entering its final stages. The Deputy will also be aware that funding for an additional 100 uh, therapy posts was secured as part of the Budget 2019. These additional posts, along with the reconfiguration of services and other initiatives outlined, are expected to have a significant positive impact on waiting times for assessment of need and ultimately uh, ther therapy service delivery. It will also help meet the needs of children and young people in a more efficient, effective and equitable manner. But can I say the situation is in Cavanaugh, you have 177 in Cavanaugh, I accept your point, something has to be done, it's unacceptable we're down an officer nine months and it's unacceptable that you mentioned there that children are waiting four years, eight months and four years, five years. That is not acceptable and that is the reason why I'm pushing very, very strongly to resolve these issues. Thanks, <coughs> As I was saying there, the move for children from Enable Ireland to the child development team seems to be where the gap happens and where they lose out on those interventions that they need. So they are getting lost in translation and there doesn't appear to be the continuity of care that these, and, the, and as a result of that these children are suffering because of that. Because my experience and the feedback I would be receiving from parents, while they're in Enable Ireland, the services are there. They're getting the intervention that they need. However, as we know, when they reach six years of age, they go on to the child development team and really it I mean, it's heartbreaking for me, as I, as I know it is, Minister, for you too, to see a letter there that says, you know, very openly that you'll be waiting four years and five months. Um, I really would ask you, Minister, here today that, you know, nine months of a vacancy for the system to not have the expertise has to have exacerbated the problem for Cavan Monaghan. And I would ask you to take a positive bias, if you like, towards the, the, the constituency in terms of making sure that, those, that, that that backlog is cleared and the parents can expect, can get the services that they need in the turnaround time that is laid out by the department itself of three months. Um, because
because ultimately, uh, if the if the interventions are not there early, there is repercussions, and as I said, it has a ripple effect at home, in school, in their school work, and it's essentially holding these children back from developing, from having the educational education that they deserve and need. Minister, it is their very basic right to have that. And I would ask you that um, to, to look at it that the vacancies like that, or that you know so, something that's so crucially important, don't lie open. And, and perhaps you could throw some light on why a position like that would be lying vacant um, for nine months. Um, I do welcome the fact that there are additional posts. Um, for uh, addressing this issue, I think that's going to be that's welcome. It's something that's needed, and here's hoping that we will actually see the benefit of that for the children who are on those exorbitant waiting lists. Thanks, Deputy Minister. Hey, to I just uh, I share Deputy Lee Smith's concerns, and I fully appreciate the frustration of parents and public reps at the excessive waiting times for assessments of need. But can I assure the deputy that the HSE and myself is acutely aware of the urgency of this matter? The implementation of the compliance improvement plans, reconfiguration of services, the prioritisation of areas of greatest need, the standardisation of the assessment need process and the introduction of a revised standard operating procedure are some of the multiple initiatives being undertaken by the HSE nationally to address the waiting times for assessments of needs. Can I also say is I agree with you in relation to the continuity of care when you mentioned talked about in Abe in Ireland and the vacancy issue is yes there is a shortage and there is a problem getting people into positions. Uh, we have now in the, recently we have returned from England a lot of uh, occupational therapists, psychologists, and speech and language therapists, and things are improving. But you asked me for a positive buys. When I see a figure of 177, I'll be asking the HSE. That's a figure we should make a dent on and make a, uh, a positive contribution because 177, you could target that figure and deal with it with a, f a few extra resources and resolve the problem before he even gets out of control further. So I, you were talking about int uh, intervening positively in favour of that situation. I will make my view, uh, views known to the HSE and actually I'm in talks at the moment with the HSE about this extra money that we got in the budget 2019. So I give a commitment that I will make it a priority issue. Thank you.